I'm here with the bike of Tony Martin of Team Katusha Alpsin. Tony Martin himself, a very accomplished rider, five-time stage winner at the Tour de France, four-time previous world time trial champion. He knows a thing or two about going fast. This is his Canyon Aero CF SLX disc. Let's go and take a closer look at it though. Frame size is a medium for Tony Martin, and as you can see, it is a fully decalled up team edition bike. So you've got all of the different brands and sponsors and partners that are associated with Team Katusha Alpsin here on the bike. Uh, fitted into the medium size frame is a Canyon S27 seat post. We've got 15 millimeters of layback on there, so just a touch under what really is traditionally a 25 millimeter, but presumably that helps you get just a little bit further forward and into a more aggressive position. Then mounted on top of that seat post is a Selly Italia team edition saddle. Now, this is really tricked out, not just because of the carbon rails, but actually on top of it, you've got kind of like a some ridges sewn into the actual fabric of the saddle because of course you can't stick something onto a saddle but you can sew something onto it to help you stop sliding around on the saddle. Now Martin in the past has used grip tape on a saddle which he infamously used in the Richmond time trials back in 2015. So this presumably is going to give him a little bit less chafing than what he suffered there. And then moving forward to the front end of the bike, well we've got one of the Canyon H36 integrated handlebar and stem combos. Uh, he's running a 13 centimeter stem with a 40 centimeter wide bar. So he's getting nice and aero there and a little bit stretched out too. Now fitted onto the handlebars are the SRAM Red ETAP HRD disc brake stroke gear levers, which are of course wirelessly transmitting to the derailleurs. Uh, the bar drop is pretty shallow, which is I think a nice looking handlebar myself. Uh, also fitted here is one of the Canyon integrated uh, mounts here for the Wahoo Element bolt device that Martin has fitted onto the front of the bike. And then if we move down actually to the front end of the bike, the actual hydraulic hose enters at the top here, just on the outside of the fork blade and then exits down there neatly on the inside. And of course that's stopping a SRAM Red HRD caliper, which is then in turn stopping a 160 millimeter rotor. Of course that rotor is fitted to a ZIP 454 NSW tubular wheel, which incorporates that sawtooth profile design, which has been shown in wind tunnels to actually reduce any uh, adverse effects when riding in crosswinds. Something which we may well encounter during this year's Tour de France. Now fitted onto these wheels are a pair of the ever reliable Continental Competition Pro Limited ALX in a 25 millimeter width. And then if we move on to the actual rear end of the bike, we've got a SRAM Red ETAP rear derailleur and that is controlling an 11 to 32 rear cassette. 32, we don't often see that actually on a race bike, but hey, we have done here on Tony Martin's bike, and why could he be doing that? Well, he uses, get this, a 55 tooth chainring on the front. He does like to remain in the big chainring quite a bit when you watch him racing, and that's paired up with a 39 inner ring. So that's really gonna give him quite a nice chain line as he moves up through the cassette. Of course, those chain rings are fitted to a SRAM Red chain set, which incorporates a Quark D0 power meter there too. Incidentally, those cranks are 175 millimeters long, so he has got a decent amount of leverage on there too. Pedals are some Look Keo Carbon Max. Um, now, interestingly too on this, is that Tony Martin's actually got a bit of cotton tape fitted across the central unit of there. Now presumably that's because sometimes when cleats start to wear, you do start to rock a little bit on there when laying down the power. And well, yeah, Tony Martin, he lays down plenty of power. So that's just gonna help uh, remain a little bit more secure in the pedal and also try and eliminate any slight rocking. I love little tips like that. Now, just a couple of finishing touches on this bike. First up, a pair of Tax carbon fiber bottle cages, of course, keeping the weight down a little bit there. And then, on the seat post here, we've got a really nice number mount. Now, sometimes we see these uh, 3D printed, that kind of thing. This doesn't appear to be one, though it's held in place with like a stretchy rubber band, the sort of thing that you can attach a cadence sensor with to a crank. And then, of course, the number will be secured in here using this little M3 bolt. And then the final finishing touch, which I absolutely love on this bike, is on the underside of the down tube there, where you can sometimes attach a battery for a uh, electronic gearing group set, 
this one, they've done away with the actual bolts and the uh, rivets inside of the frame, and they've covered it instead with a little bit of clear tape. So just giving you a little bit of extra aerodynamic benefit. I do like that. Now, you didn't think I was gonna leave you, did you, without hearing that free hub? Let's have a listen then to hear what Tony hears when he occasionally freewheels. So let's take a look then at the measurements of Tony Martin's bike. He stands at 1m85 tall. Uh, the measurement from the top of the saddle to the centre of the bottom bracket, that's 76.5 centimetres. Then the tip of the saddle to the centre of the handlebars, that's 58.5 centimetres. And get this, the drop from saddle to bars is a nice and big 14 centimetres, which is certainly going to be one of the most extreme drops actually we are going to see in the Pro Peloton. The weight of it, it comes in at 7.8 kilograms. Right, I hope you've enjoyed looking at Tony Martin's bike. It fits me just perfect, so uh, maybe he will or maybe he won't get it back. I think I'll give it back to him though because it's got that 55 tooth chain ring and that's a little bit too big, even for me. Uh, now remember to like and share this video with your friends. Give it a big thumbs up. Share it with someone who you think needs to get a 55 tooth chain ring on their bike. Now, do remember as well to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com where we've got a whole heap of casual wear, riding wear, accessories, everything like that. And now for another great video, this time another pro bike, click just down here.